uh, following the previous video, uh, we have uh, been doing the uh, Photoshop scheduling using extended Johnson's algorithm and we have determined the uh, optimal sequence uh, for minimizing the mid span time that is 4, 2, 1, 3, 5. Now we are going to find out the timetable in which uh, that is the start time and the finish time of each job in each particular machine. Okay, so arrange the job in the sequence in which we have found that is 4, 2, 1, 3, 5. Uh, so we have three missions. Mission 1, Mission 2 and Mission 3. Uh, this is the time in and time out in Mission 1. Let us do that first. Okay, so the job 4 requires 12 minutes in Mission 1. So it enters at the 0th minute and comes out at 0 plus 12. That is 12 minutes. Okay, so at the end of the 12th minute, the next job, that is job 2, will enter the Mission 1. Okay, so Mission uh, job 2 requires 12 minutes to be processed in mission 1. So it enters at the 12th minute and it requires 12 minutes. So 12 plus 12 that is 24. Okay. So at the end of the 24th minute the next job that is job 1 enters the mission 1 and job 1 requires 10 minutes to be processed. So 24 plus 10 that is 34. So similarly we uh, determine the uh, uh, finish time for all the jobs. That is, at the end of the 70th minute, mission 1 becomes free. Okay. Now, let's move on to the mission 2. Uh, so, for the first 12 minutes, the mission 2 will remain idle because the job 4 comes out of the mission 1 only at the end of the 12th minute. Only after getting processed in mission 1, job 4 can move to the mission 3. So, it enters the mission 2 at the end of the 12th minute. So job 4 requires 4 minutes to be processed in mission 2. So 12 plus 4 is 16. So the 16th minute, the mission 2 is getting free. But the next job, uh, it is getting free from mission 1 only at the end of the 24th minute. Okay. So as I said in the previous uh, uh, the Johnson's algorithm, the mission in time will be the maximum of the uh, uh, mission out time of the previous job and the mission out time of the current job in the previous mission. So if you compare uh, 24 and 16, the maximum value is 24. Okay. So the next job, that is the job 2, enters mission 2 at the end of the 24th minute. So job 2 requires 8 minutes to be processed in mission 2. So 24 plus 8 is 32. So at the end of the 32 minute, uh, mission 2 is getting free. But the next job is available only at the end of the 34th minute. So out of these two, the maximum is 34. Okay, similarly, we do for the remaining jobs. So, at the end of the 78th minute, the mission 2 is getting free. Now, let us move on to the mission 3. Okay, uh, so job 4 comes out of mission 2 only at the end of the 60th minute. So, mission 3 is starting its operation at the start of 60th minute. So, mission 4 requires 20 minutes to be processed in mission 3. So, 16 plus 20, that is 36. Okay. So, mission 3 is available at the end of the 36th minute. But the next job comes at, at the end of the 22nd, 32 minute. So, the maximum of these two is 36 minute. So, we are writing 36. So, the next job 2 is uh, being processed in mission 3 for 20 minutes. So, 36 plus 20, 46. Okay. So, mission 3 is available at the end of 56th minute. And the next job is free at the end of 44th minute. So the maximum of these two is 56. The same way we have to compute for the remaining jobs. So the at the end of the 90th minute, all the five jobs are being processed. Okay. Now let us find the, uh, so this is the make span time. Now let us find the idle time on mission 2 and mission 3. As I said previously, the mission 1 will never remain idle. Okay. Uh, uh, Every job will be processed in mission 1 first and then move on to 2 and 3. So, mission 1 will never remain idle. So, let us find the idle time on mission 2. Uh, for the first 12 minutes when the job 1, 4 is being processed in mission 1, the mission 2 is idle. So, the first idle time is 12. Next, the mission 2 is available at the end of the 16th minute but the next job enters only at the end of the 24th minute. So, 24 minus 16, 8 minutes, the mission 2 is idle. Next, the mission 2 is available at the end of the 32 minute, but the next job comes only at the end of the 34th minute. So, 34 minus 32, 2 minutes.
minutes. Mission two is idle for two minutes. Next, the mission two is available at the end of the forty fourth minute, but the next stop comes only at the end of the fifty eighth minute. So fifty minus forty four six. Similarly, seventy minus fifty six forty. So two is the idle time on mission two. Similarly, we have to determine the idle time on mission three. Okay, uh, the mission three is starting its operation only at the Uh, start of 16th minute. So for first 16 minutes, the mission three is idle. So I am writing 16 for the first iteration. Next, the mission three is available at the end of the 36th minute. Uh, 36th minute, and the next job enters at the end of 32 minute. Right? I'm sorry. The mission three is available at the end of uh, 36th minute, and the next job enters at the end of 36th minute. So 36 minus 36, zero. Okay. In next iteration, the mission three is available at the end of fifty sixth minute, and the next job enters at the end of the fifty sixth minute. So fifty six minus fifty six zero. Okay, like this, we can compute the idle time on the mission. Okay, so this is a timetable. So if you want to represent in the graphical format, we have to draw the Yang chart. Okay, as usual, the x-axis will represent the time period, and the y-axis will represent the resource. So in case of flow chart scheduling, uh, we generally use mission gap chart. So in the uh, y-axis, I am uh, using missions. Okay. So let us compute for mission one. So in mission one, the start time is from zero uh, to twelve. So the job four, it has been replaced from zero to twelve. So I've drawn a rectangle and I've shaded it. Then from, I'm sorry, then from twelve uh, to twenty-four, the job two is being processed. Twelve to twenty-four, job two. Then from twenty-four to thirty-four, job one. Okay, so first complete mission one. Then move on to mission two. So for the first of twelve uh, minutes, that is zero to twelve, the mission two is idle, right? Then from twelve to sixteen, the job four is being processed. So twelve to sixteen, job four is being processed. After that, twelve sixteen to twenty-four, that is still. A uh, job two is available. That is still job two is being processed in mission one. The mission two will remain idle. Okay. So if you follow this timetable, you can easily plot this particular graph. So once you complete the mission two, move on to mission three. Okay. So at the end of the 90th minute, the jobs will be completely processed. So your next span time is 90, and this extended Johnson's algorithm. Is applicable only if satisfies one of uh, one of the two criteria being proposed. Thank you.